Today, we talk about the biggest, most badass sneaker unboxing of your lives. I poopy do scoop. All right, so here we have Brett. The A6 GT Cool Express, another Ronnie 5 special. You see the, uh, the 5 written on the back there. If I can get it to focus, there you go. Love this baby blue toe with the um, bonish colored uh, back. And I believe this was the first model to ever feature visible gel light technology, I believe. Don't quote me on it. Not really filmed the blue laces on here. Probably going to switch them out for the white. Uh, but otherwise, again, love collecting new silhouettes I don't own. Um, and you know, this is a new silhouette that uh, Ronnie also worked on, so can't miss in my opinion. Plus, it uh, matches the screw ups a little bit. And I was like, Woo, LeBron 5. So, here you get the big ass 5 hitting you in the face. Bop. You get the uh, LBJ logo, swoosh, swoosh, sizing ish, and the pull out tab. Anyway, so let's get this guy open. Again, had to get a LeBron 5 because trying to complete my LeBron collection. So, this was, in my opinion, the best colorway I could find. Really not a beautiful shoe by any means, but I got to give it to him. This uh, Yankees inspired colorway because LeBron's a big fan of the Yankees. And you get the you know classic strap from the olden days of LeBron, the uh, silvery aglets uh, and eyelets. Obviously the Yankee pinstripes with the white and the navy. I think it actually works remarkably well on here. Um, and then it says, ah, interesting, on the back it says New York, New York. Big ups to New York, obviously. And then on the front, his number 23 in that Yankee pinstripe pattern, nothing. So that's kind of cool. Um, I believe that would stand for Zoom LeBron 5, but who knows. And yeah, overall pretty, pretty clean. The other cool thing is, uh, came with a dust bag. Again, Yankee pinstripes, Nike, LBJ logo. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty premium. Very nice, very nice. Uh, yellow laces as well, or yellow, white laces as well, but really feeling the, uh, the navy on these, so I'm gonna leave them as is. Whew, here we have a ah, New Balance MT 580. So, this is the first West NYC boutique collab with New Balance. Uh, which I already showed you the first one. Uh, this one here, New Balance 580, you get the tag there. West NYC on the back. Really like their logo, actually. Very classic appearing. Uh, and then this, uh, I forget the name of the uh, guy over at West uh, NYC Boutique, but uh, he used the inspiration of like old school 90s um, outdoorsy gear vibes like Columbia jackets and whatnot. So you get that pop of purple and teal and turquoise coupled with that uh, gray the mb logo there uh obviously the tongue 580 logo and then you know new balance on the back uh, again you get the nyc west nyc uh on the insole with that lovely lovely speckle the speckle on here is pretty pretty cool with the uh with the purple outsole so Again, this was their first collaboration and I did need a 580 for my collection. Originally, I believe these were designed specifically for the Japanese market uh, for whatever reason, but uh, you know, never really took off, I don't think, in the US. Uh, but these uh, collaborations are really what do it for me. And a lot of people are, are really feeling these. Uh, back when they came out, a lot of, especially New York based sneakerheads were all over the shoe. So, excuse me. Glad to have a pair. I also came with these laces, but really not feeling these, so I'm just probably gonna leave the teal in there. Uh, but yeah, seems like a great winter shoe, to be honest with you, just because of the theme and uh, the lack of white in the midsole and outsole really gives it a lot of wearability, so glad to have a 580 in the collection. Always trying to get new silhouettes. Woo. Well, made in New England, 1982. That's when uh, New Balance started making shoes in, uh, in their Flimby factory, which is nice. Uh, the creator, uh, the... Um, Founder of uh, New Balance was actually English, so, but funny enough, I don't believe they started producing shoes in England until after he died, funny enough, so whatever, but, um, but anyway. Uh, so here, again, I'm a fan of collecting new silhouettes I don't own, so cool look on the inside of the box, they include a little England decal, and then of course a little uh, picture of the factory, I believe, you can see right there, I believe that's the Flimby factory, is, is that right? Yep, Flimby, England. And the shoe itself, so this is a 670, and these are made in the UK, and uh, had to buy it from a UK 
eBay seller. So that worked out pretty well, getting them from the UK for a UK model. This was the cleanest colorway I could find that was available in my size. You get that burgundy maroon with, coupled with that chalky coffee type vibe. So it gives you that perfect English tea and crumpets type vibe. So uh, yeah, had to do it. Bum bum. Aha, another pair of boosts. Now, this was in a moment of desperation, sitting home alone, feeling lonely, and uh, just decided to do a trigger purchase, and that's why I got these. I already have plenty of 1.0 Ultra Boost, but to me, this was just like a no way I could pass on this Mystery Gray, I believe this one is, uh, an LTD, limited edition. Uh, so obviously not exactly the cheapest, but as you can see from the colorway, super, super rockable, great 1.0 pattern gray knit uh, with the uh, Ultra Boost written in there. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah, classic, just had to do it. I already have plenty of Ultra Boost, but uh, I feel like this is just so wearable. I had to, just had to do it. Whew, another New Balance, baby, 990 gray. And this one is particularly special and I'll tell you why. So this one was a must cop for the collection. This was my first pair of 990s. Made in America, bada bing, bada boom. So of course you get that lovely tag that these come with. And in that classic gray. Why did I go with the classic gray for these? Well, as you may or may not know, this was actually first released back in 1982. And back then when this initially came out as the start of the 990 lineage, which now has probably the most popular silhouettes, like the 997s, 998s, 997.5s, 999s, whatever. Uh, this was where it all started. Um, and the reason this is so special is because back in 1982, this was the first ever sneaker to retail for $100. That is insane, thinking about the times. You know, 1982, can you imagine paying 100 bucks for a sneaker back then? So this was the first to do it, and this is the 30th anniversary pair that came out uh, not too long ago. Um, and it includes the 30th anniversary tag uh, with this lovely metal um, thingamajigger. So glad to have it. And uh, this was a no brainer, obviously. Need a pair of 990s and in that classic known New Balance gray. So here we is. <sighs> a classic concepts box. And I'm a sucker for special edition boxes, let alone new silhouettes like I've been mentioning. So as you can see here, you see the concepts logo in there. And then this uh, stack of bills, y'all, which is an ode to uh, the cocaine game. And uh, the size tag is on here somewhere, if I can find it. So very subtle. Oh, there it is. So you can still see the tagging on there, but it's very subtle because it's in gold, which you can kind of see from the sheen. But just to get into it, so you open the box, and here are a pair of ASICS gel respectors. Is that what it's called? Yeah, gel respectors. And this is so, so lovely in hand. You get the gum bottom, and then whoops! Comes with extra laces. I'm really feeling these white laces. I think they'll help the shoe pop, especially with this midsole. And then of course with the medial side showing the cocaine inspired white, I believe these are 3M at some level. Um, and then a little bit of 3M detailing on this side, I believe, but who cares? I'm not really buy or sell on, um, on 3M. And then the green uh, to give an ode to the coca plant. And uh, what else, what else, what else? Oh, and then the red insole probably to commemorate the drug game. But obviously you get the Concepts logo in there, which is pretty cool. There you go. You can kind of see it there. So that's cool, that's cool. So yeah, really excited about these. The tongue is a nice little suede embossing, which is dope. Uh, but yeah, I feel like I couldn't pass. New silhouette, don't have the silhouette. Crush it on the colorway. And an amazing box. Shout out to StockX. So here we have a Zoom Kobe 2 from the Prelude Pack. So as I mentioned before, I'm trying to complete my entire Kobe collection since that is my favorite athlete of all time. And I pretty much have all of them except the 81 point game, which I'll wait for. They never actually released to the public in mass. So someday I hope they retro it with some kind of commemoration on some kind of anniversary. But regardless, so that's out of the way. I've got all the other models now with the, uh, and with the exception of the Kobe 2. So here it is. Now the trick was I couldn't find a Kobe 2 in a a general release colorway that I really liked, let alone in my size. So I said, you know what? I've got one from the Fade to Black pack. I've got uh, OGs of the rest, uh, with the exception of the Kobe 5, which is a Nike ID I did, but that's fine with me because that was a special time for me and whatever, we're not talking about that right now. Anyway, I figured, you know what? Why not get one from the Prelude pack, let alone the fact that this is the prettiest of the Prelude pack. Let me demonstrate. Shout out to StockX again. 
Dude, they absolutely crush it. I really don't like the rest of the Prelude pack. It just looks like super preschool, you know, fancy color, look at me, look at me type stuff. But this one, they crushed. It's a subtle marble gray everywhere, which really shines. Outsole, fire, fire, fire. Gold hints, airwear. Gold trim on the swoosh with that lovely white. Uh, and then you get the little Dubray with the Kobe symbol. Uh, the tongue, you see it says uh, Kobe. And then the, uh, the shoelaces, very, very dope. Love this pattern here. And then what's the other special thing about this? Oh, it says 24 on the inside here. And then the insole, which is hard to see, but the insole actually has his accomplishments from that season. It says four 50 point games. Um, and that's, and I believe that was all in a row, like four games in a row. He did that, which was really, really special. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I think they absolutely nailed this colorway and now I own a Kobe two and it's the best colorway in my opinion. And I have uh, one member of the prelude pack. So, all right, another Nike. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the First, now we had talked about the um, Epic React, uh, but uh, and that's the one that Nike's been pushing with all their promotional material, and that was a really funny commercial with Kevin Hart, by the way. <laughs> Kobe was in it too, actually. But uh, I figured, you know what, that's fine. I'm all about getting new silhouettes and new technologies for sneakers, just to kind of like document the history of sneaker innovation. But if I really want to do that, I had to pick up a pair of these, because even though they didn't really hype this up too much when they first released, this was the first uh, sneaker with React technology in it. The difference being it's encased in this layer, so you can't really feel it the same way you feel the React on um, on the Epic React. But this was the first colorway of the um, Hyperdunk 2017 Hyperdunks. Uh, I had an original pair that Kobe had heavily uh, promoted back then when he jumped over the Aston Martin. Love those shoes. Actually, won my one and only intramural basketball championship in those shoes. But, uh, yeah, this is basically an ode to almost like a Kobe 9, because you see the outsole pattern, which almost looks like a Kobe 9, reminiscent of a Kobe 9 outsole, and then the upper also kind of looks like it, except it's this more modern uh, flyknit construction on it, since uh, flyknit technology continues to advance. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shoe. And, uh, yeah, I will definitely look to be playing basketball in these, and I don't know about casual wear with these, but, you know, it's an option. Also interesting that they have, like, this uh, suede -ish, um, tongue that has the Hyperdunk logo on it, but whatever. It is what it is. Aha, now we've got the Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4% in the OG colorway. So, beautiful, beautiful shoe. This features Zoom X technology in the midsole, uh, so that's what makes this one special. And this was the general release uh, OG colorway of this shoe. Um, as a commemoration to the more customized pairs that had the swoosh that kind of cut into the midsole and, and came back up. Uh, and that was given specifically to, I believe, four marathon runners who attempted to break the two hour uh, threshold for a marathon. And they missed it by like literally two or three minutes, I think. Um, which is a shame because I feel like these would have flown off the shelves and had a lot more value to them if they had actually broken the record. But interesting that they decided not to release those silhouettes where it cuts in and out. Now they're starting to put them out, but not on the Zoom X versions. It's on the um, uh, Zoom flies, not the vapor flies, so whatever. But technically they call it 4% because it's technically supposed to make you 4% faster in your run times because of the cushioning. And some say that this cushioning, the Zoom X cushioning rivals um, you know, Adidas Boost. So we'll see, I haven't tried them on yet, but uh, we'll see. But very interesting and it uh, matches my scrub, so that's a rock. Came with this nice little card as well, giving you all the deets, uh, which is cool, I guess. But uh, but yeah, sucks that they didn't uh, set that record. But again, you know they're they're pushing those boundaries. Nike's always been pushing those boundaries athletically, so you got to give them props for that. As a company, that's where their strengths are, and they always they started as a running brand. That's that's their bread and butter. A running um, what's it? Running tradition is what runs the company at its core from the very beginning. So. You know, it's cool whenever they do something new with that. New silhouette, looks pretty dope, had to cop. Whew, guys, I am sweating. Uh, this is a, a lot more boxes than I anticipated. I don't know why I waited so long to open these up just to be dramatic about it. But uh, join me on the next one. I'm gonna split these up into separate episodes so that uh, you guys don't get bored and I can uh, crank out more videos for you. So uh, see you on the next one.